All right, this girl is the first time she's coming here to Gotham. She performs all over. She hails from Georgia. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Bev Reese, everybody. Bev Reese. Hello, everybody. What a fun crowd tonight. Give a, give a, give a clap for yourselves. What a fun. I like to have fun, you know? And for fun, like, one of the things I like to do is I like to make faces in the mirror. That's what I do for a good time. <laughs> and uh, I have two favorite faces, um, and one of them's my monkey face, which goes like this. <laughs> and you have a great laugh. That is so funny. It's good. You're like, I know. <laughs> um, and my other favorite... <laughs> My other favorite face is my Angelina Jolie face, which goes like this. <laughs> and my favorite thing about this woman, she's followed all over the globe by paparazzis, yet she looks surprised in every photograph. <laughs> like she didn't know it was coming. Oh, one down. Oh, you okay? Um, so one day I got kind of crazy and I mixed my monkey face with my Angelina Jolie face and I got my Hillary Swank face, which goes like this. Thank you. Um, I was in between jobs recently and I made the huge mistake of mentioning to my mother a job I was interested in. And uh, just a little backstory. my mom's been out of the workforce since the 1970s. <laughs> so last time she pulled in a paycheck, she was also wearing bell bottoms and a beehive. <laughs> and a lot of things have changed since 75. Um, anyway, she keeps calling me to offer career advice, and I'm so frustrated. And finally I was like, you know, look, Mom, I sent my resume, I called HR to follow up, and that's really all I can do. And she got real excited. She was like, Beth, that's great! <laughs> Who's HR? <laughs> so I started thinking of all the possible jobs I could do. And the new James Bond movie was out, so I was like, I could be a spy, you know? And I thought about it, and I realized I could never be a spy. And it's not because I couldn't do the job. <laughs> But it's because if anybody wanted to know where I was or what I was up to, they just have to call my mom's house. <laughs> I mean, I don't care where you're from. Like, if I called your mom's house tonight, she'd be like, she's at Gotham, you know? She'd give up your information. Because that's what moms do. And I can already envision, like, the phone call, you know, the villain, the bad guy would call my mom's house. And my mom would be like, oh, no, Bev's not here. Mm -mm. She's in Montenegro doing an assassination. We're real proud of her. Mm -hmm. She's doing good. She's doing real good. No, I, I, I don't know where Montenegro is, no. Hold on, I'll get you a number at the hotel. And sometimes, sometimes I play the game if I were a terrorist. Does anybody else play this game? Well, you know, you're like, if I were a terrorist, I wouldn't bomb buses. I'd just steal the batteries that couldn't go anywhere, you know? <laughs> but I'm lazy. Um, so if I were a terrorist, I probably wouldn't do anything but just take responsibility for things that happen. <laughs> Bird flu, that was me. <laughs> Spinach outbreak. Yours truly. And it's funny, I was watching this documentary on Osama bin Laden, and it was riveting. You know, it was, it was all this video footage. It talked about, you know, his childhood, his jihad, and his reign of terror. And I got really into it, and I was watching it, and I was like, oh, my God, he's got beautiful skin. <laughs> and he does. He might be an awful man, but he's got great skin. And I hope... I hope they catch him, because I'd love nothing more than, you know, for the U.S. to catch Osama, you know, tie him up, put him under a bright white light, 
and I could walk in the interrogation room. <sighs> what kind of moisturizer do you use? <laughs> huh, pretty boy? <sighs> well, what are the ingredients in the Jihad night cream? <laughs> oh, yeah? <sighs> really? That's all that is? Just camel spit and sand? Feels great. <laughs> And I don't normally talk about this topic, but I'm going to bring it up, you know, the Iraq War. You know, a lot of people blame Cheney or Bush or the scooter guy, but uh, I blame our forefathers. That's right. Let's think about it. If they had had the foresight to let Texas secede from the Union, Bush would be president of Texas. Texas would be dealing with illegal immigration, not us. All we'd have to worry about would be like Canadians coming down and smuggling in their politeness and enthusiasm <laughs> and similar pennies. And uh, so I feel so strongly about this. I'm working on a political musical. And uh, I don't have much written, just like part of a song. And it goes something like this. Everybody live in harmony If Texas wasn't part of our country <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> um, yeah, and then I thought about my musical and I was like, I'm gonna get my ass kicked after tonight. Because there's always like one wily like Texan in the crowd that you don't know about. And whoever you are, I know you're gonna follow me to the subway. When it's like dark and smoky. You'll come out, you'll be like... I'm going to shoot you. And it ain't because you made fun of Texas. It's because you can't sing or whistle. <laughs>